Hi, I'm sitting here in my hometown of La Jolla, California with my good friend Phoebe and I want to share a story with you because I haven't seen you in about 10 years. In a long time. And when I did see you 10 years ago, indirectly you changed my life and helped me to actually inspire the lives of many people around the world, but you don't even know the story behind the story. That's right, I want to hear it. So I'm going to share it with you right here live, so this is the first time she's going to hear it and you're going to see it. You see, I wanted to be an author about a decade ago and I wanted to write a book called The Millionaire Mentor. Now a lot of people think that I only mentor millionaires or work with big corporations, but I actually mentor inner city kids in hometown of San Diego. Happened to be pretty successful, so as I drive up in the brand new car, the kids would say, here comes the millionaire mentor. Became a badge of honor. But the story is about a young man. You did a story on Channel 10 about us. His name was David, and I called him David mm. the Goliath. He was six foot four at only 14 years old. His father passed away, and he didn't have a positive role model in his life, and started hanging out with the bad kids. So much so that he got arrested for stealing a bicycle and carrying a pocket knife to school. He knew better, but he was hanging out with the bad kids. And I took him under my wing in this mentorship program, and we started going to the movies, arcade, and we built up a bond. And after a while, I could see he wanted something special, so I took him over to Kmart, strategically in the bicycle section. I go, hey, Dave, pick out a bike. Anyone here, and you can have it. And he goes, I can't get a bike. I'm just a kid. I says, fine, let's leave. He goes, no. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, pick out any bike, and it's yours. For about 30 minutes, he wheels every bike up and down the hall and says, ta-da! I go, what's that? He goes, that's the bike I want. I've always wanted it. I said, it's yours. He goes, but what can I do? I'm just a kid. I can't get a job. I can't work. I go, Dave, let's not focus on what you can't do. Let's focus on what you can do. He goes, well, I guess I can mow lawns or wash windows. He says, isn't it funny how you can come up with a solution once you have a reason why and to Easiest way to hit a goal is to have a goal to hit, and that's what that bicycle meant to him. Well, every week I'd pick him up and say, where do you want to go, movies, arcade? He goes, back to Kmart, and he paid down on the bike. <laughs> Less than two months goes by, and we end up back at the store, and he actually paid it off. And he's pushing it out by his side, and a smile from ear to ear, and I says, mm. how in the world did you do it so quick? And he goes, I just applied what you taught me about being an entrepreneur. He says, what do you mean? He says, Zig Ziglar had this quote that you told me. To get what you want, you help others get what they want first. And the other kids were getting mad because I was making all this money mowing the lawn. I was getting $10 for each of the neighbor's yards. And I says, well, what'd you do? He says, I hired them for five bucks each to mow the lawn for me. <laughs> Before you knew it, he had a staff of kids up and down the neighborhood mowing the lawns because they wanted their own bicycles or skateboards and by helping them get what was important to their own mm -hmm. desires, he was pushing the 10 speed out by his side. And he got his bike. And I says, how you feeling? He goes, the greatest day of my life. So let me ask you one more question. He says, what? Go, how would you like it if someone stole the bike from you like you did to them? And right there, he turned his life around. In fact, he started mentoring the same kids in the neighborhood. So much so that you came out and did a report on him for the most outstanding young man who turned his life around. And the mentorship program that I met him through asked him to serve as uh, the first ever youth on the advisory board of directors. And when he went in and took his seat, he was right next to the cop who arrested him in the oh. first place. And the moral being is how many times have we or someone we know focus on what we can't do rather than what we can do. And thanks to your guidance and you airing that, not only changed my life, but it changed that young man's life forever. So thank you. And a lot of other people's lives as well.